So I was at an, at an appointment the other day, sitting, waiting to go into my appointment. And someone comes by and says, Oh, hi, Rabbi. Remember, you did my three boys. Hmm? They're, they're circumcision. So, no, 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 uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Rabbi Fine. Oh, oh, Rabbi Fine, you know what? I, I'm sorry. You look like the rabbi that circumcised my three boys. Um, but yes, you're right. you're right. Now I notice it's you. <laughs> and then comes by a doctor, says, "Oh, Rabbi, how you doing? You also did my son." And I didn't say also. Then I start speaking. He says, "Oh, I'm so Rabbi, it's you, Rabbi. Fine. Oh, I haven't seen you on Twitter recently." my gosh and then there's someone who's in the waiting room and says oh this whole time an elderly lady from in the community that knows me <laughs> thought that i looked like somebody else and then a fourth person says oh when i came in turned around the corner i thought it was also this other individual and then i came closer so to you four people in the span of 10 minutes thought i was somebody else Oh my God. And it's the first time that I was mistaken for this other individual. A moyo, someone who circumcises. When I cut challah Friday night, so, uh, you know, with a knife, so I say in a previous lifetime, I was a moyo. And now it seems like uh, people recognize my previous lifetime. <laughs> a real story. Can't even make Tanya Fiction. Welcome to Tanya today. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kadesh from Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. And we share with Michael in Germany today, Eugenia in Calgary, Bob in Morocco, June in Australia, um, Brett in Pennsylvania, Rusty, Texas, Zara in Malaysia, Amosha in Ohio. John, North Carolina. We have Daphne in South Carolina. Elise in Georgia. Hope you're doing okay there in Georgia. Sweaty and cloudy. Mm. Mark in Santa Rosa, California. Stan in London, England. Michelle in. To remind me, Michelle. Um, Sandy in. Sandy is in Michigan. Yitzchak in the Catskills. Stephanie Bokertov in Welcome. Who else do we have here with us? Ron. Welcome. Not certain where, but welcome. Nonetheless, even more. <laughs> Shouldn't be nonetheless. Even more. Stephanie's in Philadelphia. Rose is in Hungary. Cindy in Florida. Mordechai in New England. We have Marcy, J, Ari, Michael, Ella. Um, we have Akoy in Lima, Peru. We have Natalie in Brazil. We have Tupper in Baltimore. <laughs> A few others I can't make out. Oh, Cindy's in Tampa Bay. Uh, hopefully everything's okay over there. Liba and Davida in New York. Diane in Arizona. Okay. Beautiful. We all have a natural temperament. 
And that natural temperament is based on the root of our soul and the divine order of things. If you're from the right side, you're more dominant in your chesed, acts of loving kindness, uh, uh, things without boundaries, without limits. If you're from the left side, more gvura, more restraint, boundaries. Everything has its parameter. Everything has its time and place. But that being said, that's by the nature of the soul. But that the capacity of the soul is to be mutually inclusive of even that which is not your most dominant personality type. So the right includes the left, and the left includes the right. Chesed, kindness, includes judgment and um, and, bound, and, bound, and and those creating you know strong boundaries. And strong boundaries includes the indiscriminate giving of chesed. That's the way things are in the divine order of things. Now, how is it though? You know that the more dominant trait you have that less dominant trait how is it um, it's less dominant but not as revealed is it as powerful though hmm so with this now we come to an understanding of king david's verse in tehillim uh, we actually started this um, in chapter 31, verse 20. That's that in the verse it says, "Oops, sorry." How abundant is your goodness, which you have hidden away for those that fear you, which you have wrought for those who trust in you before man. So, from here, the Alter Rebbe learned, based on the Zohar, that there are two types of personalities, or hinted in the words are, those that fear you, they're the, the, um, the left, those that trust in you because of, of the love, you trust people that you love, which is the right, right? Right, right. <laughs> so, what the verse is saying like this: that those that fear you, again, those on the left, right, which resembles the trait of the house of Shammai, that the house of Shammai were very stringent, very. Um, created strong boundaries in the law of that which is permitted and not permitted based on a, a stringency which is an expression of the left and that was their dominant personality quality yet concealed and hidden is the goodness that's beyond beyond the dominant surface of Gevura of uh, of um, restraint, holding back, judgment. And that which is below the surface, not the dominant character quality of the left side, right, is nevertheless the chesed that's there, the kindness that's there of the soul is abundant and immense. It's abundant and immense. It's just as abundant, abundant and immense as those who are of the right side in their soul coming from the right side of the divine order of things. Hmm. Because that's what the verse is saying, that how abundant your goodness is. Meaning, to both those that trust in you which trust again refers to those who have who are more dominant in their love of God 
as opposed to fear of God, you trust those that you love. And for those that fear God, on the left side, that the character quality of kindness, even on those who it's more hidden their kindness, it's still abundantly there. It's abundantly there. The only thing is that it's kind of hidden. It's, it's hidden until the moment that the person needs that indiscriminate, abundant form of giving. This abundant kind of giving that is not the character, natural character quality or the revealed character quality of those souls that are rooted in the left side of the divine in Gevura, um, yet when the time is necessary they could reveal that abundant giving and they can give in a manner of being charitable an actual deed beyond their comfort zone beyond what they naturally would give that quality is there And with that kind of giving, with that kind of giving, we, we elicit from on high God's giving, his kindness, that his kindness should be also unlimited and an infinite form of giving. It's called Rab Chesed, an abundant form of giving. In other words, we have in our soul those even even those rooted on the left a capacity for abundant giving that can be revealed in the time of giving being charitable when need be that we can elicit rav chesed the abundant giving of god which in the spiritual realm is called erech ampin which erech ampin is like the crown that transcends the, the king that wears it, right? Greater than the king, greater than the person, crown that it's upon, right? So the concept of Erech is the crown of the divine order of things that is a transcendent of the order of creation, which is called Seder Hishtal Shalos, right? Which is the lesser degree of God's giving, because in Seder Ishtalshalus, what do you have there? In the order of creation, you have the ten divine attributes. And one of the divine attributes is Chesed, God's giving. But that's a limited form of giving, as we know that there's two types of divine giving. There's a divine giving that's called Chesed Olam, a kindness of the world. And just as the world is limited by time and space, so this giving of God is also a limited form of giving. But then there's chesed, um, rav chesed, an abundant form of, of giving that reaches the transcendence of the divine order of things, which is called soivev, the encompassing light of God, that encompasses and is beyond the order of the creative order of things in, in the world that are imminent within the world. And when we give in such a manner of abundant giving beyond the nature of our more dominant quality of just you know giving what's naturally comfortable to give, but we give in an abundant way. So we touch the crown of creation, meaning the uh, the transcendence of the divine and we elicit a light of of God that transcends this world that as a result that it transcends this world what it can do is bring an abundant of kindness that that abundant of kindness um, encompasses even a judgment that might be held against us 
It might be a judgment on high of where we are being held for for accountable for something that would be a judgment meaning diminishing the light of God to be brought into our lives but through this abundant form of giving reaching the abundant level of transcendent of the divine light of God that is encompassing that even encompasses those lacks those things that I was lacking in and now brings as a result a sweetening of the severities of where in the order of creation and the order of creation you have chesed and you have gvura you have God's kindness a limited kindness a limited kindness right and God's judgment refrain that might be a judgment against us but when we touch with through this abundant giving that we now bring a, a an efflux of divine light and energy into our world that is an encompassing light so it now encompasses even the severities and brings a sweetening to them as a result concludes the Alter Rebbe the 13th letter and says after the above words from the depths of my soul I seek to arouse the infinite abundant benevolence that is concealed in the heart of every individual in the Hasidic Brotherhood so that it should be manifest from concealment to revelation and to be translated into action meaning that you should fill the hands unto God may by giving charity with a full and open hand through the trusted bearer, bearer of this message there was uh, you know, someone who was going around to communities on behalf of the altar Rebbe to collect charity for those who were destitute in the, the needed real help and therefore that should be this suffice with this message for the discerning no need to spell it out the above will suffice these are the words of the one who loves you with all of his soul and who seeks your welfare and heartfelt and soulful longing that the Alter Rebbe signs Shneer Zalman the son of my master my father our mentor the Rebbe Rabbi Baruch his father's name was Baruch wow so the Alter Rebbe is speaking here about in charity and how giving in an abundant manner right revealing that which is concealed in us that abundant form of giving and it's there even with someone who it's not their nature their nature is that of the left very you know everything by the books letter of the law um, doing what you got to do when you got to do it in the appropriate manner that it needs to be done but here this is rising above transcending that so I just in human relations we all have a temperament in how we deal with others and the natural go-to way and how we deal with things now a lot of it is already has been kind of corrupted because of upbringing traumas you know different things that we've gone through that you know this might be the thing that triggers us that brings out some negative form of behavior the altar is not speaking about that at all he's speaking only in the positive um you know that negative behavior yes is something we need to deal with but one of the ways of dealing with that negative behavior is to recognize that we have a part in us that is whole complete and worthy and we don't need 
to um, that's the word I'm looking for. We can, when we tap into that part of in us, the soul in us, it's whole. So that means even though I may have a dominant character quality, but I'm whole, so I have the other side of, of the less dominant quality. And when we recognize that, then it's easier to tap into. If we only see our brokenness, then I'm saying, oh, I'm lacking this other character quality because I'm of the right or of the left. So the other thing, I'm really lacking it. That's one way to see. Or maybe, as the Altered is actually pointing out here, you're whole, you're complete, you have it. It's just not dominant in you. But to recognize that you have it, and you could ex and you could access it. That's very important. So, for example, by nature you may not be the most giving person, but if you meditate to yourself and you think, hmm, I am. I choose to choose to be a giver. Hmm? Yes, I choose to choose to be a giver. Not because um, I am, you know, shown myself to be a giver, but because I choose that that's who and what I am because by the dint of my divine soul, my divine soul is a giver. So I choose to be that. Ah, uh, maybe you are really. Your soul comes from the left side and you're more of not as much a giver as a result and it's not the dominant quality. But now you choose that this is who and what you are. And it has to be a constant choice because it's not so dominant. Even if it was dominant, it needs to be a constant choice because why are you a giver? So most people give because it pays for them to give. There's a payoff on the other side. That's not really giving then. God gives because he's a giver. Not for the payoff, but because that's his quality, a giver. So likewise, we need to be a giver as the divine quality of our soul that is a part of God, like and, and being like God means to give a giver, to be a giver, just because that's the divine way to be. I hope that resonates with you. Questions, comments? Mordechai says, every lesson in Tanya keeps me surprised with new ideas about the better way to view the world. <laughs> yeah, the Alter Rebbe is like, wow. Golden nuggets every single day. Thank you for sharing that, Mordechai. It, it, it's, it's like, uh, I, I don't even know what how to say it, but it's like just unreal. And every day there's a golden nugget that the Alter Rebbe is sharing with us. It's not me, it's the Alter Rebbe. I mean, I'm giving a little angle maybe of how my soul understands and perceives things, but it's the Alter Rebbe. Yeah, not unreal. I don't see any questions, any comments. Um, 
folks. Nothing. All right. I hope this clarity. Um, has a question could you repeat the two kinds of chesed please sure chesed oilam kindness of the world oilam means world just as world is limited so this kindness is also limited that is the kindness of god that comes from the divine attribute in one of the ten divine attributes in Seder Hishtalshulis in the world of the chain reaction of cause and effect. Right? The three you have the three parts of divine intelligence, Chabad, Chachma Bina Vidas, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and you have the Chesik word to write the seven six emotions and then and Malchus, royalty, sovereignty. So you have that form of divine kindness. It translates in us also giving in a um, limited fashion. And then you have Rav Chesed. Rav means abundant, abundant form of giving. Abundant meaning, in a sense, infinite form of giving without limitation. And that is Keser, the crown beyond creation just as the crown sits beyond the king the king that rules king god that rules in creation so the case of the crown is beyond that that refers to the divine will there it's limitless a form of giving and as we express what that means Okay, Marcy, give me just one moment, and then please share with us. Let me just, before I lose the feed over here. Honestly, we've been stacking with our tzedakah, but trying to feed the homeless at least every two months. Does it count or just extra slacking with our Um, tzedakah doesn't necessarily have to be large amounts of money. Um, well, in a, an abundant way, so it's going to be larger amounts, of course, but it's also the consistency of it, day in, day out. I always try to give charity before I start davening, as we've learned in previous uh, teachings. So, you know, have a charity box, not a piggy bank, Piggy are for pigs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but a charity box, a pushka as it's called in, in Yiddish, that's, uh, you know, a mitzvah. And then just give in there and then you'll give it when you have, you know, the moment. I hope that helps. Yitzchak, is it similar to the attributes that are mentioned after the sphere account? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Simcha, what is someone treats you with rough attitude and you're like, what happened here? What should be our response? That's a TRC question. Okay. Maybe it should be response with, um, our, our response should be to, to give. And that's a boundless form of giving. Uh, John, so do both types of souls only receive Rav Chesed? Yes, thank you. Um, yes, both souls, right, from the right and from the left, have the capability of an abundant form of Rav Chesed. Absolutely. Yes, John. 
uh, thank you that making sure we had a clarification on that. Marcy, please share with us. Uh, so my my comment is more similar to the second to last question you just had about what do we do with people who who you know with whom we have difficult interactions. So as you were talking, I was thinking about a difficult interaction I had this week, and thinking maybe I'm looking at this wrong. Maybe I'm thinking I was I was thinking there's something lacking in them, um, and now I'm wondering if if the problem is that whatever it is I think they're lacking is just uh, a recessive trait and that their soul is whole and complete and I need to find a way to tap into that that piece that was missing in our interaction uh, a way to bring that out and that's that's maybe what's missing in my interaction that that I need to find a way to to connect with them at that level to recognize that they have that capacity for infinite giving infinite compassion and to to somehow tap into it or to to encourage them to want to bring that out and that that that's where my focus needs to be in, in that relationship right now excellent excellent yeah so um you, you know we easily see the the the, the fault in the other and as the balshantov says that's looking into the mirror when you see the fault in another the only reason you can see it is it the saying goes, you you spot it, you got it. On some level, you have it. Um, and that's why we're able to spot it 100%. So if now that you've spotted it, instead of uh, reflecting and seeing them, see ourselves and what we, where we can go deeper with it in our own nishama and to be able to connect, as you said, very nicely uh, Marcy, uh, how we can connect with them um, from where they're coming from, right? And 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 not necessarily, you know, not necessarily to, I mean, to fix them because maybe you can inspire them, but fixing, um, they need to do their uh, on their own, but maybe to inspire, but even more than inspire is just you're being more authentic true self by doing that and by that authenticity the inspiration will come which is you know it's an aveda that's that's really a, a job to be able to look at ourselves that way thank you marcy any further comment there Uh, and I wouldn't fix them or try to fix them. I would be working on the relationship between us. Right. That would be what I would want to repair. Right. Right. And and your part that you can do to repair. Very. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very good. Thank you. I think I got everybody here. Did I miss anybody? No, I think. Okay. TRC this Sunday night, 8 p.m. Of course, after the Torah studies class at 6.30 on Sunday. Um, do come and join us. Beautiful. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the time you have an amazing, wonderful, great day. The king in the field, the month of Elul.